if you did that with a certain amount of quickness, then you'll have a force. Now, if I transfer that momentum kind of quickly, then awareness, this is your foot, and I, I interrupt it, see? Then it's very hard for your body to reach. You're pushing this invisible armor, this kind of thing, and it's not very, not very effective as a reach, right? The next step, I invade him with my awareness. He punches me, see, here. You don't, right? It's not so much where I push him, punch him, see? see? You know, first movement Tai Chi is float, sink. So important. Mm -hmm. So you push into me, you're trying pushing, I, 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 I just float him, here. Like here, here, he tries to attack me. So he's here like this, see? So we just sink. He tries, isn't he? Yes. So you, you want to attack <clears throat> me or something like that? So you're here, right? See? see? <sighs> Thanks for helping me and hello, thanks for watching. I want to explain how Tai Chi works in practice um, beyond the doing the form and relaxing your body. How do you put it into application um, against another person in combat, in really controlling your body and someone else's body? So, because it's a confusing topic and with the terminology of, uh, translated from the old Chinese culture, it's hard to understand. So we're going to break it down in simple words. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay, so there's, there's the physical element, your Li, your Jin, your power. How do we generate power in Tai Chi? There's the sensitivity, the awareness, and then what is Qi, what is energy? We're going to answer all these questions. It's a little bit ambitious, but we're going to do our best. And then anything that's needs, that merits further digging, we'll explore that in other videos and explain it. Sound good to you? Sounds good. Okay, so first is force. How do we generate force in Tai Chi? You have to generate force in a relaxed way. And how do you generate force in a relaxed way? By the transfer of momentum. Um, suppose, so what that means is if I relax and I shift my body weight, I generate a momentum. And I let that flow into something. Imagine I had, um, if I had a bowling ball, okay? And I hold the bowling ball, right, like this, I'm carrying it in my hand, and I shift my weight from right side to left side, from back to forward, and I just, and my arm just relax, and the ball, ball will do what? It will roll out of my hand, and it'll roll forward at some, Velocity, right? Not very fast, but that would be an example of how, in a relaxed way, momentum flows from my body into the ball and down the down the bowling alley. Yes, does that make sense? So that's the nature of it. Um, in Chinese martial arts, a lot of it is based on, a lot of it is influenced by staff work and spear work. So imagine if I'm relaxed, I'm just holding like this, and I rock my body from right to left, then the momentum flows from me into the staff eventually. That's a very small amount of power. Nothing will happen, right? But as you train, you could pull that momentum in a more focused and, and gathered way, then, then it will begin to be a force that will make a person go back. So I'll show you that. So if you grab onto the staff, uh, this is kind of a light staff. Let's do the firmer one. Yeah, this one's sturdy. Okay, grab this firmly. Don't let me push you. So it's here. Take a good stance, you need a better sense of that. So that's a good solid stance and he's stable like that. If I'm relaxed and I flow him one to four, he's gone back. And why is that? It's because he didn't realize the momentum has flo was flowing into him. If he sees my power coming, he'll brace and anchor himself and it's hard to go. But if I'm relaxed and there's no sign my force is coming, and my, see my force is gone, and he, his body has shifted a little bit, now he knows to, to resist by flow a little momentum. And he's always a little bit behind because he only knows my force is there when the force gets there. So, so he's always reacting a little bit too late. It's like trying to block something after it hits you. Does that make sense? If you see it coming, if you see it coming and you brace for it, then you're, you're, you'll be pretty okay if you see it coming. But if you don't see it coming and it's happening, what is that like? I'm one step behind your force. One step behind my force, right? It's, you know, I'm, if you spar, do some kickboxing or boxing, you know that feeling where someone's punching you and you know you should block, but your block always comes a little bit too late and they, they've hit you, they're driving you back, so it's, it's always like that. So he's always a, a split second behind because he's only reacting after the force, after the momentum has transferred into his body. And he's trying to adjust for the momentum that's transferred into his body, but he keeps adjusting and, and he, keeps, he's, he keeps adjusting a little bit too late. So if you did that with a certain amount of quickness, then you'll have a force that will, that will go through him and send him back before you can react before you can react correctly. Does that make sense? Yes. And I'll demonstrate even more clearly. So take a strong, strong stance. Like you're a football player. You're gonna stop me from getting the quarterback, right? And I have my hand on you and see like, if I, I'm just pushing straight forward like this, this is not gonna go anywhere, right? So say like that. So I'm here, I'm not doing anything tricky. I'm not going up or down or anything. I'm just pushing in like this. If I stay relaxed and I form and went forward. And 
really, really try your best to relax, I feel, uh, to, re to resist. I feel like you didn't try your best. So there you are, like this, right? I relax, see, momentum goes in, so. So what is that like? I got <clears throat> lifted upward, my body weight went in a 45 yeah. degree angle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Anything I try to do, just um, just a half second off. Yeah, I would like to de-emphasize the upward angle. So go like this, your arms. So I'll go like this, so I'm pushing on a downward angle. So don't let me push you. So he's resisting me here. So I'm gonna relax and flow in momentum in, see? What's that like? Just bypass my my force. Yeah, yeah. I bypass your resistance because your resistance is triggering only after you feel yourself being moved. And you're, you're, and you're trying to resist the force you felt, but more momentum is coming. So the new momentum keeps sending you back. Does that make sense? So this relaxed transfer of momentum is a way that we transfer, create force, transfer momentum, whether it's for pushing, for hitting, or for pulling. Pulling is like this, like if you grab onto me, don't let me, don't let me pull you. So I'm going back like this. So this is not working very well. So I relax, right, grab me? And I pull momentum back, see? You can tell I'm not doing this very hard, but you could also tell that he's having a hard time dealing with that. What is that like? Similar as everything else so far? Yeah, very similar. And then all of a sudden, my entire body was linked yeah. in mm -hmm. one motion. So this is the physical element of it. This is not chi. This is not e. This is just about being relaxed and shifting your body weight. And when you shift your body weight like this quickly, then you'll have an explosive force. So if you put your hands up, like I'm gonna punch you, right? So, so this is using my body muscle to punch, right? This is sending my body's momentum forward. And uh, stack your hands like this, and you'll see that this will push him back because he's, he's, it's the same thing as what I was doing when I was pushing him before. Now, if I transfer that momentum kind of quickly, then um, I generate a stronger force, moves him more, and I'm still staying relaxed. My body doesn't tense up, it's, it's just like that. So it just goes through and in that fashion. So this is the fourth generation. Make sense so far? Any questions so far? I'm sure they'll come up, but not yeah. this time. Okay, so next is E, what we call E, intention in Tai Chi. And E is what gives us our sensitivity, as people like to say when you develop your push hands or your, your trapping and the kind of sensitivity. Your ability to find their center, find their root, move their center of gravity. These are all different ways people talk about um, using sensitivity and how to use your awareness. You can use the two directions, outwards into their body and inwards around on, on your own body. So I'll show both. So if you stand strong for a second, and don't let me push you back. So, so he's resisting me here, right? He's aware of my forces. <clears throat> okay. So he knows how to, he knows my force and he knows his body. He's resisting me with this dance, good posture. I need to bypass that. I bypass that by using my awareness to send that into his body, not along his bones and joints and stands where he's strong, but along his fascia, along his, like this. So I'm gonna to lightly touch, not so strongly, just lightly touch his body like this, and then just stretch his skin like this. I feel into his body, he resists me strong, so you're straight. So I feel into his body, I can feel the stretching of his wrist and to his elbow, to his shoulder, to his hips. Once I feel down to his legs, see, I continue, he'll get moved. So come again, see, here, he's solid. I feel through his body, so he's gonna go like that. <clears throat> what is that like? The experience. So like. once it's, it's um, I'm one step ahead, and when I try to push back, I'm pushing myself back even further. When you push yourself back, you're trying to, you end up pushing yourself back even further. So it's about because I'm, I'm using the fascia, which is how your body coordinates um, your movement. Let me explain what fascia is. It's a connective tissue beneath your skin, above your muscle, that spreads through your whole body, like a big spider web that covers every part of your body. It's neuromuscularly how your body how your, um, your conscious mind organizes your motion. Because things conduct, put your hands up. You know, if this pressure, this pressure here, you feel this pressure and it, it gets conducted to your brain. Say, hey, there's this much pressure, five pounds of pressure on my fist, four pounds on my wrist or whatever. And, but this distance to his brain and this distance to his brain is different. So the signals arrive at different times. And plus of ground, maybe the laser doing something, we're wrestling. So all these signals are coming at different times. That would be a weird and difficult math problem to say, when does these all come together? This is like those math problems, the train goes east 25 mile per hour and your dad rides a train going west at 38 mile per hour after two hours, how far apart? You know, remember those things? You don't like to remember those things? <laughs> so it's like that. So 
You think your brain can solve that so fast, so easily? Not really. We use this fascia web and we can sense the, all the pressure on it, like a, like a strings on a puppet or like a spider sitting on a spider web. The spider knows when something lands on its web. It just feels it through the strings. Does that make sense? So there's all these strings, these fascia web, that as soon as you feel this pressure, whatever the, it is, all that pulls into your neck, into your, your Golgi tendon sensors, which tells you the, the tension in your body. So your body uses that. When I go heavy, then his joint receptors, his joints can also measure the force, and he's very good at dealing with that, okay? But when I go, when I go light, okay, if I go light on his fascia, then, then I don't engage the joints if I go light, and I engage the fascia, and I'm confusing his body's strings, the fascia web that tells him the pressure. Does that make sense? Imagine you're a puppeteer. You have a puppet, you're moving it around, making it dance, doing different things. And I start like moving the strings around, or I, I, I replace some strings with rubber bands, then it's gonna be hard to control, doesn't it, right? So I'm interrupting your body's awareness. This is your good, and I, I interrupt it, see? Then it's very hard for your body to resist. And you try to resist, but the signal is not right. So your response is incorrect. You push yourself off, your, off of your feet. Make sense so far? Yes. So this is not magical. It's neuromuscular, it's anatomical. If, if we build a sufficiently complicated, um, sufficiently sophisticated model of the human body and the nervous system and the neuromuscular system, we can replicate this in the machinery. But we don't have that good of a manufacturing at the moment, but it does make sense logically, doesn't it? So when we send our awareness into his fascia, that's how we move him. It's very tempting when he's strong, that he's gonna, that I feel his power, he's pushing me or something, right? That I, I want to like overcome the leverage. It's very tempting. So as a Tai Chi practitioner, you want to send your awareness not into where he's strong, but flowing around that, see? I'm, and then, so he's going. So I'm, I don't want to go into where he's, where he's resisting me well, but to flow along that, along the fascia, around his body to where I can move him, just like that. Does that make sense? And you're gonna do that all the time. And outwardly, my, my E, my awareness, is always flowing along his fascia. If I wanted to like, um, like throw him like this, and he's resisting me, sit down, sit back, like this. So he's got his resistance. And I go, oh, let me get lower, let me pull harder. That's not Tai Chi. So here, I'm gonna feel along his fascia. My left hand, I'm gonna flow along his fascia. I feel through his root, I find that. See, I can now begin to move him in a way that's pretty easy. Whereas if I force it, sit back, see, this is not going anywhere. This is not working, right? But I feel this, I rotate this, see? Just, he'll go. When I feel along the fascia, find your oh, connection to the whole body, we can move the person. That's outwards. What about inwards? Well, that's what happens when he pushes me, grapples me, punches me, something. So, if you push my chest, he pushes in, uh, let's, let's do a classic Tai Chi way. So, if you push my forearm, like you're pushing like this, go ahead and push. So, his force is into me. Well, you know what you want to do is you, you want to redirect them or whatever, whatever, right? But push in. His force has entered my body, into my bones, into my core. You can feel the pressure on my feet. Now I'm tense. It's very hard for me to relax and redirect you at this point because he has already created tension into my core, into my body. And he feels that. Can you feel the pressure on my feet, pressure on my center of gravity and all that? So if he feels that, that means his awareness has invaded my body to my root, to my core. And now I, and I'm not free. Does that make sense? So he pushes him in again. And before, see, this time you don't feel my root like this. I, 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 could, I could tap dance. Not very well, but <laughs> so so this time, see, then I can move him. What's the difference this time and that time in from your perspective? So it's like <clears throat> your your hand was just suspended. Just suspended. And everything else is like floaty. Yeah. So know, weird, suspended right? and floaty. So in Taiji we have the Peng, Li Chi An, ward off, roll back, squeeze, press, push, um, splitting, plucking, elbow and shoulder, elbow and these eight energies. These energies was what comes into play, but they're not really all energy. Some of it's more like how you direct your intention. So he pushes me. If, he, if I feel this pressure and my intention is stuck right here on oh, how strong it is right here, then I, I, I won't succeed. If, if I feel the pressure into my body, oh, my body's under so much tension, that won't succeed either. So when he pushes in, my elbow directs the energy around and out. So now the energy doesn't enter my body and it's easy for me to redirect them at this point. He pushes in, I direct it with my elbow. I can even direct it back towards him, see? Different, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel like it's like a, some, some floating suspended thing that, that you're pushing. Um, another student was saying the other day that it feels like she's pushing on an Ironman armor that I'm wearing. 
And that, that's not a bad way to think of it. So Iron Man is a Marvel hero with a, like a robot armor. So your chi, your awareness essentially forms a layer above your body. If you really push, if you push and you found my center, I would get pushed over. If you found my, my body mass, you could push me over. But my awareness doesn't go to that vulnerability. It goes along my elbow, away and to the outside. And for some strange reason that I can't fully explain very well, your mind latches onto it. So you kind of think you're pushing me, but you're actually pushing where I'm thinking about. You're pushing to this invisible armor, this kind of thing, and it's not very, not very effective as a result. So we use our awareness, our intention, to direct this force along the surface of our body, like an armor, or like, I think of like water flowing off of me, like shower water flowing off of you. So it doesn't enter the body to affect you. Does that make sense? And, and then, so the feeling of the energy and awareness flowing on your body is what we call kao in Tai Chi, the leaning energy. And the directing it to a specific place back towards you, around me, is done by the, the elbow kind of pointing. And that's the, the zhou, the elbow energy. That's the last two of the eight energies. So our awareness prevents your force from entering. If you punch me, right, and I block you, I'm tense. Now we're stuck like this. This is not very good for either of us. This is not what we want in Tai Chi. He punches me, the force is gonna stay on the surface right here. And, and I invade his fascia so I can, move, I can move him at this point and he doesn't have very good freedom. If you punch and you, and you punch with your other hand, so other one. So this is what he wants to be able to do, just attack, 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 right? If he, if he tenses me up, then I'll be, I'll be pinned down, I'll be like that. So my awareness will keep the energy from entering, the momentum from entering me. Punch again, but this doesn't enter me. And he can still punch, but I'm not off balance, right? Next step, I invade him with my awareness. He punches me, see, here. You don't have the balance for the next punch, right? It's not so much where I push him, punch him, see, see? Different, but you just can't do your, your next punch very well. What is it like? I'm totally off balance. Totally off balance. So the instant we touch, I've, I've redirected his force along the surface with cow, and I've invaded his body with my awareness and to take his, to take his uh, um, con uh, balance so he cannot continue his next movement. Then I could do what I would like to do next. Make sense? Any questions so far? So whoever can master this and whoever can launch this E, mm -hmm is a better practitioner. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whoever can, you know, awareness, every martial art has aware, awareness, or every good martial art has awareness. They just have awareness in different places based on your strategy and your moves. So, the, so if you, let's say you were a, um, a, a Filipino martial arts, you do your sticks and knives. I would say your awareness of, of angle and, and timing is like top notch. Their awareness of angle and timing is really, really good. If you were a, um, a master of Western boxing, right? Then your your awareness for for distance and rhythm is uh, timing is top notch. That's why, like you see some kung fu guys go fight a, a good boxer, they want to do their their kung fu move, and every time they step in, they get jabbed in the face because the the boxer's mastery of that distance and the timing when to throw that jab is excellent. Generally better than most kung fu people. Does that make sense? So that's where their awareness is really good. And if you play that game, you get destroyed. If you're like a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu grappler, then your, your awareness for leverage, leverage and pressure is top notch. You know really how to like wrap someone up, how to apply your weight and pressure in, in very advantageous angles, evolving, changing, shifting angles. That makes sense? So where is Tai Chi's awareness? Where is our superpower compared to that? It's the awareness of the fascia that controls your body's coordination and balance and awareness of their intention to strike me. You want to punch me, so you want to punch my body. So his, his intention is once it hits me, right? And if I block it, his intention is still going to, and it's going to try and press through and knock me. So come again, how do I steal his intention so that, that <laughs> you no longer tries to punch me? So you have a very light block and you, you didn't drive through like the time before. So controlling your intention and controlling your awareness of the forces, this is the Tai Chi's game, Tai Chi's superpower. And if you play your game, you can win. If you play someone else's game, it's a tough time, isn't it? <laughs> so you're gonna to learn to play your game, even when it's scary, even when it's challenging, even when they're big, fast and strong, especially when they're big, fast and strong, because you don't have something else to go by except by manipulating their, how they use their body and their tension. Does that, does that make sense? So this is E in Tai Chi, where it comes into play. Then what is Qi? What is energy? Energy is the signal 
that lets the consciousness, spirit, and the body communicate. So, you know, like your cell phone needs signal to do anything really, really useful, how to communicate. So your consciousness makes your body do stuff, punch me, kick me, resist me, and so forth, so forth, right? So qi lets you manipulate that, spirit to shen. So we have peng, which is floating. We have an, which is like sinking. We have ji, which is like a forward bouncing. These are different qualities of energy. And by manipulating the energy, we have different other different effects. So he like, if you push me, push me hard. So he's pushing me over like this, right? So we, we talked about if I feel his fascia, I mean, maybe his fascia, um, then his body will glitch. It, he won't be able to apply his force right. That's from the previous thing we just explained. Energy is different. He pushes me, right? And I touch him. If he, his pressure isn't intense, I won't work. So I have to use my cow. And, and then I touch him, I float. See? What did you feel? Just like with very little pressure, I'm kind of floating yeah. back. Mm -hmm. So you push into me, you're kind of pushing. I, 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 I just float him. Here. Different than the stuff before, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Anything you want to say about that? It just seems too easy. Seems too easy? Great. That's how, <laughs> just, uh, that's how we would like things yeah. to be, right? Too easy for us and confusing for them. So that's floating, right? Um, if you push my push me a little bit lower, push me here, push me back for like we're in a small match like this. So strong, 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 strong. So like this, if I try to push you down, you're resisting me. This is no good. This is just me doing bad, bad wrestling, bad sumo. So he pushes me again. I use cow. The energy flows around me, and I sink. <laughs> you're chuckling. What do you think? It's just like a. It's come on, grass. Yeah, it's a, a different energy system that gets activated. Yeah, and what happened to your legs? It had to buckle. It, it, it was so much buckle. pressure here. Yeah. I had to like alleviate that pressure. Yeah. So, so you know, people do like a trapping. They do push hands and they're, they're here, here, here like this. And they think about how do I get a, an angle on him, take a center line, and then push him over. This, that's, that's a good technique, but it's not Tai Chi's energy control. That's geometric leverage. And you should use that when you can. Tai Chi is like this. So the energy, the, the you know, first movement Tai Chi is float, sink. So important. So we're here, resist me. So we're doing, we're trying to control a trapping, different thing. What I really wanted that feels resistance, I connect his fascia, sink. Just like that. So he's like here, here, he tries to attack me. So he's here like this, see, and we just sink. He just go right down. What does that feel like? Yeah, a lot of pressure, downward pressure. A lot, you feel like there's a lot of downward pressure on your legs, right, isn't it? So yes. you, you want to attack <clears throat> me or something like that? So you're here, right, see, see. <sighs> Any comments? <laughs> I just feel like I'm being like compacted down. Yeah. Does it look like I have the leverage to do that? Not really, right? It's not like I'm right over him pushing down, but my energy floods, flows through his body through the fascia meridians and, er, and everything you try to do suddenly has a heaviness. You ever wake up one day or what if something happened, you're just like in a depressed mood. Some depressing thing happened and you're just walking around your house like this. And someone's like, can you give me a, a water? Like, okay. Here's your water. You know, it's just everything seems so laborious when you're depressed like that, right? I've kind of infected you with that heaviness. You want to punch me, but it's like so laborious. And some days, like you hear some great news in your, your family, you're going to go on an all expense paid vacation to, to France or whatever. Um, and when that's like that, so you're here, you come, you attack me, you're pushing your whatever, we'll float them. And everything has this light light and easy feeling like, ah, oh, I'm so happy. Well, life is great. You know, that sometimes we walk around like that. So that's when your vibe changes, your energy changes. And so the energy part, the chief part, is we really want to control the vibe of your energy. And how do we do that? By mastering how your own energy. So your qigong, your tai chi, you could feel the lightness, heaviness, expansiveness, gatheringness, shrinkingness. You feel these things. And then you share it with another person. You, you make contact with them, you feel their fascia. The fascia is where our energy meridians flow. So once you know their fascia, you have your access to your meridian. From there, I could create sinking, floating, and just like that. And, and then if he's just staying still, nothing really happens, okay? But if he wants to do something, if he wants to push me, then, then his movement will be infected by, the, by those things. Or if he's resisting me, he's stopping me from trying to move him, then I create floating. If he wants to resist me, then I create sinking, see? So when he has an intention, and the action and its effect and then then the vibe of the energy infects all of that and it changes how your body is able to respond it's very useful for let's say you want to grapple me so let's say you want to throw me in some way pick a throw you like to do <clears throat> okay yeah so let's do that last part so you're coming in 
So, to, and you're coming, yeah, go ahead, get to the last part. So here, this way, if I resist him, it's only a matter of time before he powers me, overpowers me, right? So he comes in like this, go ahead, push. I float. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> I just went flying this way. <laughs> yeah, so come again. Swing. Okay. Yes. So I don't really have a good leverage, but, but he wants to do something and suddenly his body is sinking, his legs are giving out and then you can't complete your motion well. That's the qi, that's the shen. The qi is like the energy in the shen uh, spirit. You, I like to say the vibe, that's a modern term for, for that, for that um, action. And then, so now everything's kind of not going the way you want it to. Does that make sense? Anything you want to say about that experience? Um, just a question. Is there a time when yi just appears without any conscious thought or intention? Does it become just all intention? Intention Eventually. is super crucial, and we always have intention. When you want to do something, you have an intention. I want to grab you, I want to punch you, I want to block you. These are all intentions. And then, when, and then when I touch you and your body responds, that's an intention, right? So you might want to respond with your stance, but I'm going to send your awareness to your fascia. So you, might, you might come in to throw me like you did before, just like come in to throw me. Yeah, so you're, he's pulling me right there. So he's thinking about he's going to grab my body mass and tuck, tuck me, so like that. But even as he's doing that, go ahead. I'm going to keep the fascia active, so I'm going to send the awareness on my body. So he wanted to grab my center of gravity, but he, he did not. He grabbed my, our fascia, and he wasn't realizing, go ahead, pull. He made puppet strings for me to move you by, and then I sink you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. So my awareness, my intention, has to redirect his intention into the surface with cow, and so all the time. If, like, let's do a simple demonstration, like, um, if you bear hug me, right? So he's bear hugged me, and I'm going to just show that I can still move around. So grab, grab hard, right? So like this, if I relax, I could still move her. I could still whip him around with my fascia, and I could grab his leg and take it down, whatever. Now, if you squeeze hard and, and like kind of sit down toward the ground, his body weighs on me. This gotten into me. Now it's not working. Like, see? I'm not, I can't do it in my Tai Chi because his, his intention and force has entered, entered and invaded my body. So he wants to sit down. Go ahead. Before that, see, I expanded my... See, this time I'm still moving around. So before his force can sink into my body and bite into my core, I have to use my awareness, my E, my cow, to keep that on the surface. You felt the difference when you could sink into me and when you couldn't. So some people, they're Tai Chi, they get pretty good, but they fail because they let the opponent tie them up and sink their force into them, and, and now it's too late. So you go ahead, sink into your way, waiting to me. This is too late. It's, I can't do anything anymore like this. Come again. This time, see, I'm free. I didn't let his force sink into me. I received that, directed it, and then I connect his fascia, and I can move him, sink him, float him, and so forth. So yeah, intention, super important. That's probably where most people fail. And the second thing is, because they fail, because they're not defending, they're letting the battlefield go into their awareness, not our awareness. They're not directing their intention, their awareness into their fascia. So you're not really attacking people's weaknesses. And if you don't know how to control your energy, your floating, sinking, expanding, shrinking, then that's another deficit. But so these are the components. How to generate relaxed force, relaxed movement. Um, not just for pushing and hitting, but if he punches me fast. Oh, that's so fast, right? That's a real fast punch. If I have to tense up and block fast, go and punch. Then, then when I block him, I've tensed up. If I, and if I tense up, then I can't do my Tai Chi. Does that make sense? So how punch me? So how do I be relaxed so that I, I, could, I could reach his hand and stop the punch without my body stiffening up? So that's like, you know, when I swing the stick around, you want to be able to flow your momentum. So he punches, hey, this is relaxed. This, I got him here like that. How to stay relaxed in the midst of that? How do I attack him that's quick? I can't, I can't do like this to attack him, right? That, that'd be silly. I need to attack him quick. Go ahead and block. So my attack has to be quick, but it's loose, it's relaxed. Here, but it, it's simple. And so every movement has to be relaxed so that we can continue to play the Tai Chi game. So you want to learn to move relaxed quickly. So that's the, the physical skill. Intentional skill, their fascia directing your force around you, not into you, and then the energy, flow, sink, expand, shrink. And those, these, are, these are the key elements that, that makes Tai Chi work completely. Can you see how if you have all of this, that you can apply this? But if you're missing any one piece, it's gonna be really rough. Any questions?
It just felt like there was a buoyancy when I was trying to sit. A buoyancy, yeah. The yeah, buoyancy like, is that cow yeah. and the feeling of pung that created by the awareness and the energy of that. Yeah. It's a good observation. Yeah, no other questions so far unless... Anyone yeah. else have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. You want to come in? Uh, we'll, we'll take your, we'll oh, take yes. your microphones. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, go ahead. In your case, so someone in my coming. case, somebody coming at you like forces right here. Ooh, yeah. That's the part how to relax. Yeah. When you relax, the forces get you, Ooh, right? Yeah. So that's the relaxing mm -hmm. word is kind of misleading Confusing, or incomplete. Yes. Exactly. So you want to be, you want to relax, but the relax is not the end game. Like she says, if you push me and I'm relaxed, I'll just be pushed over, yes. right? I'm relaxed so I could, so that my mind is free. So you, you push me, I'm relaxed and then I redirect the force. See, it's not entering me. Yeah, and then it's yeah, very yeah. easy for me to <laughs> move you any way that I want. Mm -hmm. Push me again, then I'm relaxed, I redirect the force. I can send it right back to her like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say that strategically, tactically, what we really want to do in Tai Chi is that we want to reduce their freedom, reduce the opponent's options, and make them more fixated. Imagine if we're fighting and you're, you're obsessed with punching my, my chest right here for some reason. You're just obsessed with that, and I realize that. You're desperate to hit my chest. Mm -hmm. You think I have a broken rib there or something like that. I could take advantage of that obsession of yours while I'm free to do anything else that is more clever, perhaps, more strategic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you push me, and I want you to be fixated on pushing me. I'm relaxed. You think, oh, you're, you're, you're going to get me, mm -hmm. right? But it's not because I've already redirected the energy around my body. So she's stuck, but I'm free. So I might redirect back. I might sink down. I might go sideways. I might go this way. So I'm free while she's not. That's the, the goal I want to create. And that's the philosophy that I, I like people to take away from mm -hmm. Wang Tai Chi that, oh, you, when you are relaxed, you are free. When, when, you, when someone's yelling at you, someone's pushing you, Someone's being mean to you. They could be mean. They could be obsessed. The more they're fixated on that, that's fine. But you are free to be happy, mm. free to not worry, free to do well. That, that's the thing we want to take away from that. So, so you only want to be relaxed to the extent that it makes you free. Mm. So I push you. So here, so this is too relaxed. You're starting to bend over. So I push this. So imagine my energy, my force flowing on the, on the young expanding feeling. So expand the young feeling while you're relaxed. See, that feels different, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once you have that, you could put a hand on me or on my hand, and then you could um, apply force along my fascia. Like that, yes. Mm. How does that feel? Yes, feel like connecting, <laughs> yes. The, 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 the wires yeah. connecting, yeah. So you'll get used to it, and then you'll get to realize that this is really the only way to deal with something yeah. if they're bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, muscling is not very good. Yeah. So, so you, you want to push me, right? So here, so you relax, you redirect the force anywhere. It could be this way, this way, this way. See, this is already mm -hmm. redirected. So mm -hmm. we could just bounce that back. We could send it aside. You want to push me here? I got you. See, redirected. What did that feel like? Yeah. I can't reach. Yeah, you're, and you're trying to reach. Your mind was fixated, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're trying to reach me, and, I've, and I, I, got, I got your fascia. And from there, I, I affect your fascia, so your force, your own force bounced back. Because your mind is getting there, but it's not there. So it's been cut off, and it's bouncing back. Mm. So like more physical and mental. Mental is crucial. About a, uh, if I touch to, touch to push, the body is act as it to, react, to, to react. Yeah, yeah. But mind to overcome, yeah. to not do it, yeah. instead of what you said, yeah. young yeah. or in... Yeah, young usually. Young. Can you swim? Yes. Yes. Okay, so swimming. When you first swim, so well, some people, not, some people are natural swimmer, I guess, but you, you go in the water, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, God. Oh, I'm so tense, and I'm gonna, I don't want to drown. And you're, 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 you're tensing up, your body's overreacting, you're getting tired, really, really tired, right? And then after a while, you learn to get in the water, you know, ah, I relax, I float. This is no problem. I'm going to float. I can go through the water like a dolphin, you know, like you relax and you become a master of the water, master of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can get used to swimming and swimming, if you're tense and you're bad, 
it'll kill you. <laughs> it's like just as dangerous as fighting, maybe more dangerous. Probably more people die of drowning than they do of fighting, right? So, so if you can learn to be relaxed and safe and comfortable and effective in the water, you could, you could learn in Tai Chi too, right? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's like that. So in our practice with, with ourselves, with our partners, we're learning so that as soon as someone comes and pushes me, it's like, oh, go ahead and push. Oh, it's time to relax. <laughs> it's not time, to, not time to tense up. And the more fast you are, the more relaxed I have to be. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Any, yes. co any other questions? <laughs> That's a good question. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's it for right. now. Thank you guys for helping me demonstrate. Hope that elucidate how Tai Chi works for you. And we're going to drill into how to practice these things with mm -hmm. other other discussions. Thank you. Thank you.